Have you ever remembered a website that you liked, gone back to check it out only to realize that it's all changed? Well, today you'll learn how to see what websites look like in the past. There are a few situations where you might want to do this. So one is like I already mentioned, where you might just want to go back and have a look because you liked something on it. Uh, sometimes it might be there was some copy on that website that you really liked and you wanted to check it out again. Uh, maybe you liked the layout. Maybe you just want to see what your competitors used to do or how their websites have changed over time. This has been a pretty important part of competitor research for me in the past. And sometimes you might just wanna go back and have a look at your own website as a little reminder of how far you've come. I'm Jimmy from jimmyrose.me and Content Snare. And if you would like to learn more about automation and productivity and just saving time in your business, hit that red subscribe button below, but let's get on with the video. So it's super easy to do. All you have to do is go to archive.org slash web. You can just go directly to archive.org as well, or uh, the lazy man's way is Google the Wayback Machine, and it'll come up as uh, number one there and bring you to this website. All you have to do is type in here the URL of the website or page that you want to see and click browse history. I'm going to use my software business content snare. But it looks like we have some results here. So you can see this bar across the top, which is kind of like a bar chart where this indicates how many times it's taken a snapshot of this page in a certain time frame. So these are like the months in 2018 across there. If this came up with nothing, then a couple of things could be going on. Like if there were no results, it could just be that the website is too small or you're looking for a page that it just hasn't archived before. Or the website could have added a special tag called no archive, which tells uh, internet archiving tools like archive.org uh, to not save their site. So there are a few times you might not actually find the site you want in here. But if you do, this is what it looks like. So with this, you can kind of tell that the website was launched in late 2016. And you can see right now that 2020 is highlighted and it's showing a calendar of 2020 below. And these little blue icons here, sometimes they're green, just indicate how many times it's taken a snapshot on that day. So if you hover over say 25 here, you can see it took one snapshot at uh, 8.13 on that day and it took two snapshots on April 30. So you can just open up one of these and open that up to see what that website looked like. And once it's loaded in, you can see it's got this little archive uh, box at the top and then it just shows the website as it existed on that snapshot date. Now these days it actually does use images. If you go back far enough, I think some websites, it may not have archived the images properly, but looks like it is doing a pretty good job these days. But this bar across the top actually allows us to jump through to different time periods. So I can actually jump back here, go back to 2016, just click there and it will open up that older version. You know, that's not too bad. Um, oh, that, that section looks pretty bad, but you know, this was the very first version of our website that I think I launched from an Airbnb uh, somewhere in Denver there. So <laughs> it's not too bad. Um, not as bad as I was expecting it to be, but yeah, so that's kind of cool that you can go back in time, uh, to look at different points on a website. Like I could go somewhere in the middle here. Like this is bypassing the step where you pick an exact date. Obviously, if you want to go back to like to pick the actual date, you actually have to go back to the main calendar here and you know, pick 2018 and then have a look. And let's say we want to see uh, June 28. Now, either something was wrong with our site on that date or the archiving hasn't worked all that well, which can happen sometimes. Um, like, because it's, there's a lot of things it's got to archive, like, um, you know, CSS and, and images and that. And just sometimes, it doesn't necessarily work all that well. You can see there the menu is kind of displaying vertically. So it looks like some CSS maybe got lost, which which can happen. Or maybe our site was actually a bit broken right when this took the snapshot. So you do see that from time to time. Now let's go back and have a look at a much more popular site like Facebook. And you see how different this looks. It has a lot more samples. You can see it's it's taken four and a half million snapshots of facebook.com over time as far back as 1998. So let's go and have a look there. We could click in 1998 and have a look at the very first snapshot it ever took. 
December 12. Uh, now this is interesting. It looks like it's actually not even Facebook. Yeah, you can see how there it hasn't saved all the images, probably because they're GIFs back in uh, the 90s when you used GIFs <laughs> everywhere. But um, yeah, so it doesn't even look like it's what we know as Facebook today. It's some other company that bought Facebook.com. So I'm guessing they bought it from them at some point. So if we skip forward, you can see the, the year showing over here um, as I scroll the mouse through. So let's say like 2000 and it looks like at this point it's still this about face company um, I definitely started using Facebook in like 2007 so I'm going to go through to there so it's kind of cool how you can just literally click through like that and just see how things changed over time it looks like uh, we have an early version of Facebook here in 2007 and then, you know, if we jump through to, let's go 2014, it's probably going to be a lot more modern and closer to what we're used to now. And there you go. So um, just one quick thing to mention too, is that it's not necessarily just the homepage of a site. You can use this for sub pages as well. So I'm just going to throw in an old blog post of ours and you can see uh, it's picked up blog posts as well and taken snapshots of those. Obviously a lot less frequent, so only 26 times versus I think the homepage was 400 and something. You can see there is our old post. It even looks like it's got some of the old JavaScript in there, which is kind of amazing because we don't have this opt-in anymore. But that's it. There is just one final little tip that I'll finish up on. And that's if you try to go to a website in Google and it's down, like let's say we open this up and this was down at the moment, and you're like, damn it, I really just want to look at what was on that website recently. I know it's down right now, but I just want to see it. Click this little arrow here and go to cached. And this actually shows Google's cached version of that website. So Google is also doing a similar thing to archive.org in pulling up different versions of websites, but it actually allows you to show you the last one that it took. So let's say that was down, this uh, cached version there, you can see is, this is how it appeared on the um, 5th of July. So sometimes you can actually get to the content that you want, even though the website is down. That's it. Now you know how to go back and check out what a website looked like in the past. This comes in handy for me all the time. Very simple. Go to archive.org, look up the URL. Uh, that's pretty much all there is to it, as you have learned here. If you'd like more little tips on how to automate your business, uh, get more productive, get some of your time back, hit that subscribe button below. That's it. And I'll see you in the next video.